So the next step we are going to see were uh, common V-Ray uh, global illumination settings. It's going to be the render element, okay? I basically can add any render element here and I have to select one by one and delete it and most of the settings are going to be down here. And I would really suggest to open the V-Ray documentation um, website. This is, uh, the link is on our, on our um, e-learning platform, okay? And check all of the different render elements. For example, we have our beauty render elements, we have the matte render elements, the geometry ones, and the utility render elements. So on the beauty ones, you have the basic uh, beauty passes, Okay, this is uh, the final image, but then I have the diffuse filter, specular, global illumination, raw global illumination, all the ones that I need to create uh, uh, the final beauty render element. Okay, this is, um, for example, when I um, put all the passes together, here's the, uh, the first basic um, equation, okay? So V-Ray Lightning, Global Illumination, Reflection, Refraction, we add all those together. So in Photoshop, this would be uh, with the blending mode that has add in parentheses, okay? And in the second equation, you have actually uh, add in and also multiply, okay? And for that, I actually use all my beauty passes, okay? But not just to create these beauty passes when I work with linear workflow, I can also use them to enhance, enhance my final image in post-production. For example, if I have just this, um, uh, the lightning uh, render element, uh, I could um, just overlay it. Um, for example, the raw lightning render element, I could overlay it all over my, um, view image and mask out some parts and then really increase light in a specific point, okay? Uh, just with overlay or also soft uh, light, I can't, if I'm working on a linear workflow, this is perfect because I could go to the element of the reflection if I want to make then this uh, windows opaque or I can go to the refraction uh, and then change how the refraction works and then instead of a clear glass then I can have a, a, a milky glass of course and um, I can also go to the global illumination one and start uh, coloring the light how it works here and at the end all of them are going to come together in my beauty render element okay and this is why they are so great uh, for post-production this is only in the case that I'm actually using linear workflow and I'm putting my render elements together. But what if I'm just going to use render elements for other purposes and I don't want to work in the linear workflow? Then we have other render elements. Okay, uh, there is the ones that are called mask type and most of them are in the matte render elements. So basically it makes uh, full colors out of the objects. Okay. So, uh, for example, uh, let's go over those render elements. I have um, the render ID, okay? I'm going to add the render ID. I'm going to add the material ID. And I'm going to add the object ID. Okay, so for the material ID, if I open my materials, you'll see that uh, a right with the right mouse click, I, ha I have to put an ID so the so the uh, red uh, material I'm going to set it to one, okay, and I'm going to set the wall to two, and uh, but everything else that doesn't have an ID is going to come out black, okay, and I can also do it for the object, so I can call this object uh, right button click on the object. And that's going to be object properties and object ID. I call it one again, and this I can I can call it one as well. And you'll see that they are both going to render in the same color. Okay, and I can call the floor a different render object. So that's going to be two. Okay, and when I render now, um, in the first pass. If I go to my render elements, I'm not going to see anything. They uh, start coming out in the second pass. 
Okay. So, uh, for example, if I check my material ID, I just set the material ID for the wall and for the for the red color, and the same for the object ID. For these two, I put in one, and the floor I put in as a different color, and everything else renders black. If I go to my render ID pass, then every single object gets an ID. Okay, and the problem here is that you see that they don't have a proper anti-alias. And even if I click here and I enable filtering, what it's going to do is take this filter, okay, but that doesn't mean it's going to affect the anti-alias. And uh, this is, of course, a disadvantage, but this mask can still contribute a lot to my workflow. And uh, this is why I like using the V-Ray frame buffer. Okay, so I'm just going to delete this to, to use less RAM for the moment. And I'm going to use my, uh, uh, sorry, not frame buffer, my V-Ray wire color. Okay, and what's my wire color? Uh, if I go up here, you see that my objects are in different colors, and this is my wire color. So it's actually going to render in those colors. Okay, and if I, if I render now, Okay, this is enough. Uh, you can see that each object is rendering in its own wire color, and I have a much better anti-alias here to use as mask. So the advantage of this is that I can just uh, take this mask with a color picker uh, selection, or even with a magic wand in Photoshop or any other software, okay, and create a, a mask out of it. And uh, so what happens if I have every single object, for example, if I brought them from Maya, they are gonna come gray. And so every object has the same wire color. So there's a bunch of scripts to randomize the wire color and assign a different wire color to every single object. That's, that's an option. This is in a script uh, spot. Um, so uh, th those are the ones that I use uh, to create masks, okay?